What is going on guys? Rodney here with Crypto Bros. Welcome to tonight's video. Today we are talking about VeChain. Obviously the timing couldn't be better just for the fact that their mainnet launch is on June 30th. We're just a few days out from that. I will say this video is a long time coming. Um, I've always wanted to review VeChain. This actually just won a little poll that I did on my Twitter channel. You guys can follow me over there at Rod Crypto God. And then also this was a viewer request video. So I'm going to do like a little bit of a compilation. In the first half we're going to talk um, briefly about what VeChain is, all they're doing. I mean, it's such a great project. And in the end, we'll talk about their mainnet launch and what you guys can do to prepare for that. Uh, before we jump into the video, just quickly wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who has been subscribing to the channel. Seriously appreciate every single one of you guys. Um, I will be doing a giveaway or starting a giveaway tomorrow or what is tomorrow, Thursday, either Thursday or Friday. So stay tuned to that. We'll be doing a $50 Ethereum giveaway, I believe. And uh, yeah, all that being said, let's talk about VeChain. First, just real quick, we're going to talk about just the current price points. Currently ranked 17th, um, total market cap $1.4 billion, trading at $2.60. Circulating supply essentially $550 million, total supply $873. Uh, million tokens down from an all-time high. Obviously, we're in this massive pullback um, in the market. I think this mainnet launch would have had a ton of hype had we not been in this bearish-esque market, but um, down from an all-time high of $9.45. Let's see what Coin Checkup um, talks about or what they how they kind of describe VeChain. It says, VeChain is the world's leading blockchain platform for products and information. VeChain strives to build a trust-free and distributed ecosystem based on blockchain technology and circulated uh, blockchain technology, self-circulated and expanding. Um, if we actually jump over here, I'm going to do my best to kind of talk about what it is. Yes, VeChain has a ton of different things going on, um, and, and I don't remember if I mentioned this or not. So the problems that they are trying to solve specifically is is an in, is in an industry that I work in. Maybe that's why I'm biased. Um, you know, VeChain specifically operates kind of in the supply chain management, tracking the life cycle of an actual good or product, essentially from its creation all the way to delivery till it's in the consumer's hand. And really, they're they're making you know kind of this aspect of their blockchain very valid in specific industries that we'll actually check out in a second. Um, a couple things they have going on, and, and I work in logistics and supply chain, so this cold chain logistics piece and this logistics uh, part in general is really actually what brought me into VeChain. So I will read this here, then I'll talk a little bit about my experience. We'll look at some of the other fields, we'll talk about the partnerships, and then we'll wrap this up so this isn't a uh, super long video. I obviously could talk for 30 minutes straight on VeChain, but it says, uh, Cold Chain Logistics, this is one of their own solutions here, and it says, VeChain's Cold Chain Logistics Solutions uses pri uh, proprietary IoT devices to track key metrics throughout the entire journey um, of a product. VeChain embeds a digital management and sharing uh, piece in every process, making Cold Chain Logistics transparent, regulated, um, secure, and reliable. So think about... Um, stuff that's running that needs to go over the road in a semi truck that still needs to be refrigerated um, could be a number of different project uh, products that are on that truck. But a lot of times, what happens in terms of the uh, problem is that sometimes when it gets to where it's going, the product isn't cold anymore, or or it fell out of the safe range of temperature. One issue that I had um, when I was selling this type of stuff is is orange juice. So when orange juice gets to a receiver it needs to be pulped and checked. And if the, the check temperature isn't below a certain price point, there is a problem. And they will not take whatever this product is. The issue that lies here is that they have a really hard time defining who is at fault. Is it the guys who loaded the truck for loading the product too warm? Is it the actual truck or truck driver's fault because their, their trailer didn't keep the product at a certain temperature or whatever? So it gets very messy in terms of like claims, who's paying for this damaged good, all these different things come into place. And, and this is really where, um, you know, VeChain really caught my attention. They're making these little identifiable uh, sensors that kind of are in with the product that measure the, the specific temperatures or points and record them on the blockchain during a transit. Not only are they doing with cold chain logistics, they're also doing um, a lot of other similar overlapping things in a bunch of different industries, including automobile, 
uh, medical and healthcare, luxury and fashion, liquor, agriculture, obviously logistics again. Um, to give you an example of each for you know the automobile piece, they're kind of making this recordable um, thing for any car that is connected where it updates automatically on the blockchain. Think about like anytime you get an oil change, change a headlight, whatever, kind of like a, um, oh, what's that, uh, Fox, whatever. I forget what it's called. Uh, anytime you buy a car, so all this information will be recorded on the blockchain. Same with this um, medical device. And so essentially with this, they're able to track um, uh, the production of medical devices, make sure they're they're uh, produced well, make sure their efficiency is well, make sure when it gets to the um, end consumer that it's working well. So they're they're putting all of these things, all of these transactions, essentially to make sh devices safer, better regulated, more efficient, more reliable. They're putting all this stuff on the blockchain. Um, and these videos right here are super, super good. Most people generally talk about, you know, when they do a VeChain review, they talk about this fashion and luxury in terms of um, using the so VeChain also creates RFID tags and they embed them in the product. So if you're buying a you, normally the example is an expensive handbag, it embeds this RFID piece into the handbag that a verif um, verifies that it's actual it's the actual product itself um, and then it tracks that over the whole course of the product's life cycle. Um, this helps with things like counterfeiting. Um, and authenticity, things like that. They're doing the same general concept with uh, the chips in, in liquor and wine. Um, they actually have a DAP launch down there. So a lot of things in terms of, I don't know, managing and tracking the life cycle of different products through an immutable uh, blockchain ledger, obviously. So anyway, um, that's kind of the brief rundown of some things that VeChain is doing. Um, what I would actually love to do in this video is, um, go through their team. It is a bunch of studs. Again, you can go to this, uh, check out all these videos here. This website is vchain.org. Um, their team is awesome. Tons of experience, tons of recognizable names, companies, um, things that are going on there. For the length purposes of the video, we will skip that. You know, if you're wondering when it originally uh, kind of started, back in June 2015, you know, fast forward three years, here we are, Q2 2018, VeChain Thor blockchain launching, VeChain wallet um, with VeChain Forge function coming up. You know, in the later part of the year, they're going to be working on some cross chain and side chain technology, which we're seeing other projects do. Obviously, very important piece there. And then the ecosystem expansion towards the uh, once we get into 2019, obviously, some things to come. But um, just kind of more so touching on the validity of the product project. These guys have some huge, huge, huge partnerships in place. Um, DNVGL certification. These guys deal with, uh, one, a ton of different industries, but sometimes you'll see like an organic uh, tag on there. A lot of that comes from these um, DN, DNVGL certifications. And then I'll just read you a, a brief uh, snippet here. It says, um, these guys are a risk management company. It's a leader in its field. The company provides... Uh, other companies with audits and advisory services as well as software solutions um, and providing them with certifications with other crucial operate uh, operations ton of good stuff here um, this piece right here talks about their first uh, decentralized app which is called my story this has to deal with uh, you know the wine piece here you guys can check this out as always I will post all um, I will post all uh, the website links down below. Partnership with PricewaterhouseCoopers, one of the big four accounting firms in the world. Not only that, PricewaterhouseCoopers has a huge ecosystem of other partners which are turning VeChain and their blockchain solution onto other uh, different companies, different industries that can use their blockchain solution. Dig is the one in this um, example. Uh, Kuhn and Nagel. Uh, they are the biggest global sea freight forwarder in the world and the second in air cargo. They are partner partnering with VeChain to smartify the shipping parcels, obviously tracking what is in some of these containers, Chinese tobacco industry, um, BitOcean, financial services, and other financial services, a handful of other real estate, art, and automobile industries. couple that are down here that are, aren't mentioned in this video, one, BMW, which uh, was a huge ordeal, and then 
uh, the mother house of Louis Vuitton, and that's where they're going to be implementing some of these RFID tags. You know, this article right here, you know, disclaimer, we are long on VeChain. Um, just flipping over here, this is just their v, uh, their BMW and Oxford, Oxford University um, partnership with VeChain. And then, uh, actually, we'll just leave this out for the shortness of the video. Um, there's, there was a huge piece that, that I wanted to touch on in one of their partnerships with, um, I don't even think I have it up anymore. Um, their partnership with, uh, with essentially China, and they are creating a smart city. And it, uh, at one point, this VeChain blockchain and everything they have going on, there's kind of almost be like the, the backbone of their, uh, of their smart city, a data center in the West, as they're calling it. If you Google like VeChain partnership with China, you'll be able to see a handful of articles there. Now, just getting onto the mainnet piece, a um, couple things. So June 30th is the actual launch of their mainnet. Um, they will be doing a token split and for every one uh, VeChain that you hold, it's going to be swapped to a VeChain Thor token at a 1 to 100 ratio. So if you have one, that means you are going to get 100 um, VeChain Thor tokens. One thing that I'm not super sure on on this piece is if that means you won't, you won't be keeping your actual VeChain tokens. So if you have one of them, you'll be getting 100 of these in place of that. It's kind of like a split at this point, but you'll be getting a whole new token, but in a bunch, uh, in, in a much larger supply. I think that does some cool things for um, the, uh, the liquidity of the token. And then also there's a, a video that CryptoBud um, got on there, so shout out to him. Basically he was saying in terms of the price point, you when this mainnet launch happens, they do all the, the snapshot, the, the price of VeChain will be divided by 100 and that will decide the price of the new uh, VeChain Thor tokens. And, and um, if you're wondering how to capitalize on that, um, right now Binance does support it. So as long as you get your tokens onto Binance, they will do all the back end work for you. Uh, at the later time of um, this, like if you're holding it on a MyEther wallet or Trezor, um, there will be instructions on how to swap those out. Most people, I would say the easiest way is definitely um, you know, putting it onto an exchange, but a lot of times, you know, this is, you know, that can be a scary thing, you know, as people know, uh, VeChain tokens and uh, exchanges that may be hosting or doing this, a big in surge, you know, that might, that might lead to a hack or something weird. So um, totally up to you guys on how you want to handle that. But just so you know, Binance is supporting this. And we're just going to go through this little timeline here. And, uh, and then we will kind of wrap this bad boy up. But overall, um, I hope I kind of painted a clear picture as to why I'm such a big fan here. So like I said, uh, June 30th, Authority Masternode deployed, mainnet does go live. Um, the Genesis block generated for uh, VThor Forge. The snapshot on Ethereum for the X node monitoring pauses. July 9th, VChain Thor mobile wallet is available. Also on July 9th, the X node binding um, service will be available. Once we hit mid July, the exchange of VChain token swap becomes available. Uh, on VET, so VET uh, on VeChain Thor, after the 1 to 100 split, you know, you'll be able to start trading that in mid-July. The end of July, VeChain Foundation will provide ongoing token swap services after the exchange is complete. So again, if you don't put it up onto an exchange right away, you will be able to do that at a later time. Um, once you get it on the exchange, the swap happens, you can obviously get one of their wallets, put it in there. Um, and it goes on and talks about in August, the chain will be able to be integrated with the Ledger Nano. So very cool stuff in there. Biggest thing to note here is it within the next couple of days, make sure your V chains jump back onto an exchange. If you don't want to go through the process of doing that all manually, then you could take advantage of this. You know, will we see, um, you know, one thing I was thinking of is, is, you know, people are going to look at that. I have one, I can get a hundred. The price point is going to be dirt cheap at that point for a single uh, you know, VeChain Thor, you know, are people going to kind of push the price up with the, uh, you know, buying into this kind of next movement mainnet launch in the, uh, the pricing standpoint? I would guess no, just because the market sentiment is not super great. But, um, but yeah, and I'll leave this link below. Uh, this talks a bit, a little bit about um, the, uh, the Thor power. It's going to be like a relationship like uh, Ethereum and gas or Neo and gas and how that works. Um, that will go to specific holders uh, of their nodes, whatnot. Um, and yeah, last but not least, um, again, this part down here just talks about Binance. So 
Anyway, guys, I hope that I painted a semi clear picture of uh, V Chain. Again, if you're wondering my stance on it, one of my favorite projects, one that I think holds real value. Um, they already have things going. They're creating these these sensors and these RFID chips in house. They've got a working blockchain. They're pushing for you know 10,000 transactions a, um, a second. So they've got a lot of things going for them. Um, currently, I'm sure I left some stuff out. I don't know what the current time is on this video, but it's really, really trying to hustle through. You could break a lot of these things down and talk for a very long time, but really, that is all I have for you guys today. Um, just wanted to say thank you for tuning in. I hope you got some value here. If you do, definitely subscribe to the channel. Keep an eye out for the um, the giveaway within the next day or so. I'll be shooting that Thursday or Friday. Um, so anyway, guys, uh, I love you. Appreciate you. Catch you guys soon. Um, I am out.